Hello and welcome to The Bad Spot and this is the Iron Sworn Starforged combat example video that accompanies my Combat 101. And it's intended to show you all how the stuff that I talked about in that video works in practice. Now, I play this game solo usually and as much as you all seem to like it for some reason, I thought I wanted to give you a break from hearing me ramble on on my own and show you how co-op works. So I asked the co-founder of the Ladies of D&D &D Twitch stream, Jenna Figures, on to come and help me out. Say hello, Jenna. Hi. Jenna is playing Maeve Salako, a haunted empath searching the forge for her former captain's ship, the Mutara. She has engaged the services of my character, Vesper Blackstone, a mercenary weapon master trying to escape the ravages of war and his violent past. Together, they have tracked the ship to Umbra, a desolate rocky planet that is plunged into perpetual darkness by its unusual rotation. In the dried-up basin of a once lush lake, scrap bandits have made camp. They are picking this lifeless landscape clean, littered as it is by the wreckage and debris of some long-forgotten war. Maeve's intel has led them here, and she has identified the distinctive fuselage of the Mutara towards the back of the camp. They are currently up on the lip of the basin, looking down at the danger below, and we join them as Vesper surveys the scene with his scopes. So, um, up on the ridge of this basin, and uh, Vesper has his kind of night vision scopes out, and he is surveying this scrap bandit camp and he is kind of counting off the bandits and kind of watching them patrolling in amongst these kind of towers of scrap and twisted metal that that kind of litter the basin now and i think he counts about like half a dozen at least but there is enough activity in the camp that you can see like the flashes of arc welders and sparks coming from bits of workshopping that, that's happening in and around the place um that there's there's clearly a lot more and yeah he's kind of just sizing up the situation and uh, what are you doing whilst uh whilst i'm scoping things out uh well i'm already down there i think um so so how about this you're we're looking we're kind of like seeing through your night vision uh goggles right now mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it just kind of like turns and you see Maeve kind of like trying to carefully pick her way over these junk piles and um i think we see her pick up like maybe like a rusted pipe or something that's like broken on one end so it's like kind of sharp and she just kind of like nods at it and keeps moving like okay i have a stick now and I'm ready for whatever is about to happen next. So I've been like, I've had my scope up to my eye and I've been reading off this information to what I think is you to side of me, but then there's no one there. And then when I see you down there, I'm like, oh, this is, this is bad. But we're, we're connected by comms, right? You can hear what I'm saying. You can probably hear me kind of cursing at you right now. Um, but I think um, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to hold my position. I'm in a good tactical position. And if it does kind of kick off, I can cover you with fire from here. And I can probably talk you through um, to the Mutara, to the ship, because we spied earlier on. We could see the distinctive bit of fuselage sticking out from somewhere at the back of the camp. And I think what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to try and kind of plot you a course through this camp. And uh, to do that, I'm going to be using focus and observation. Um, so that's going to be the move uh, secure and advantage. So secure and advantage says when you assess a situation, make preparations or attempt to gain leverage, envision your action and roll. And this is going to be with expertise and focus, like I said. So this is going to be rolling plus wits. Okay, that's a miss. That is a classic way for me to start a combat. So uh, in a combat example, it would feel wrong if it started any other way. Uh, we don't have momentum to um, kind of bail us out here. So um, it looks like um, I'm going to have to pay the price. Paying the price is when you apply the most obvious negative outcome and the most obvious negative outcome is that we get rumbled and we get rumbled to the extent that we are going to have to we're going to have to fight now and uh, we're going to have to enter the fray um so the first thing you do when you enter the fray um is you give the conflict a name and a rank 
in Starforged, combats are objective based. And our objective is to retrieve the Mutara. So that is going to be the name. So the name is going to be Retrieve the Mutara. Uh, how difficult do you think it's going to be to retrieve the Mutara? I, bearing in mind that you have night vision goggles and I have a rusty stick. <laughs> So uh, keep it reasonable uh, here. I think, uh, I mean, it is probably going to be difficult, um, but I think that it feels kind of more dangerous than dangerous. Formidable, which is kind of like the middle rank, because the thing is, Scrap Bandits, they know how to fight, but they are easily defeated. They are not elite fighting force. They have us outnumbered, but I'm pretty sure I have them outgunned. I'm a weapon master. So I don't know, dangerous or formidable, what do you think? Mm, I mean, let's let's go for a little challenge here. And also, I have a stick, so yeah. let's let's be formidable. <laughs> the stick sways it into formidable. So yeah, this is going to be. You a... doubt the stick? <laughs> no, you I doubt, shouldn't. Right? But you will see. <laughs> yeah. Um. So it's going to be a formidable combat. So um, now we have to make the move. Uh, enter the fray. So when we enter the fray, we both do it, or just you, or just me, because I'm the one who's down there. So we actually both do it, and we do it depending on our situation. The actual move says, you know, how you en you enter the fray depending on your positioning. Okay, so I think I'm still trying to be sneaky down there. I'm still trying to, like, kind of stay hidden and slowly make my way around to the uh, Mutara. Yeah, so you're going to be rolling plus shadow, I guess? That, I mean, that seems right, because I'm trying to sneak. That, that, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that is that is a miss. All right, one for each of us. We we are off to <laughs> a fantastic a start. Yeah. Um. So I'm gonna start this fight in a bad spot. So uh, are you just kind of tucking in behind some scrap, or what are you doing? I think I had probably started to try and maybe like climb a pile and some mm -hmm. bits of refuge is like kind of like clanking around off at my feet or something. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe like, I don't know, like a tuna can or something kind of goes sliding down the pile that I'm like, okay. Yeah. So uh, you can kind of, I and I can see this from where I am now. I can see maybe the, the head kind of torches on some of the scrap bandits turn in the direction of what I can only assume is your tuna can. Um, and now I'm, gonna have to enter the fray so um what i think i'm gonna do because like i said i'm in a decent tactical position one i didn't really want to give up but now that we've been rumbled i'm kind of kind of have to so um i think i'm gonna kind of hustle down the, the the slope and into the camp and i'm gonna try and get through these kind of like twisted heaps of of, of scrap metal and cut these bandits off and maybe try and get into a better position to be able to start to fight them. Uh, because if all of them are alerted, then I'm going to be useless up on the, the basin. So um, I am a weapon master, as I said before, and thankfully my weapon master asset um, gives me a plus one when I enter the fray, which is good because you are very exposed down there. Um, and I'm going to be doing, I'm going to be making the move, uh, quickly, you know, moving around with speed and agility, um, to try and get down there as fast as I can. So I'm going to be rolling plus edge. Okay. A strong hit. So a strong hit does two things. Firstly, it puts me in control, the opposite of being in a bad spot. And also it gives me plus two momentum. So we are going to need that uh, momentum at some point, I'm pretty sure. Um, and also my weapon master asset gives me an additional plus one momentum, which is lovely. So we're up to six now. When I say we, I, it's my momentum. I'm not sharing that with you. I, I wouldn't. That's uh, that's that's my own personal one with them. Um, so I think... The strong hit has seen me get into a really good position, and I've managed to get down there really quickly. I've managed to avoid tripping over or making any more noise, and I can see the bandits are all starting to kind of move around, and I can sense that people know that you're there, definitely. But I have managed to get into an excellent piece of kind of tactical cover and it's around the side of the, these two bandits that are walking over to where I can now see you. And I think that 
Vespa is not the kind of person who would pass up a free shot. So I think I'm I'm just going to try and take these two bandits out because they are armed with nasty looking kind of um, melee weapons kind of cobbled together out of bits of scrap and spiky bits. And I know you've got a stick, but I feel like uh, you're going to be no match for these two. So I am just going to try. Yeah, one, one stick down. is not as good as two sticks. So <laughs> in the stick hierarchy. Exactly. So um, I'm going to be shooting them. So I'm going to be um, making the move strike. Strike says, when you are in control and assault a foe at close quarters, roll plus iron. When you attack at distance, roll plus edge. So I am sh clearly shooting them. So I am at distance. So I will be striking, rolling plus edge. Okay. A weak hit. So, okay, uh, let's see what that looks like. So I kind of squeeze off like a short burst of gunfire and they just fall where they stand. They are kind of clean kills. These, This is kind of ultimate military efficiency. Um, but because I rolled a weak hit, um, we do get a, a positive benefit, which is we get to mark progress twice. So we fill out two boxes of our progress track. Um, but I'm also now in a bad spot, which, you know, that's not a great position for both of us to be in, but here you go. Um, so I think that's going to look like, um, let's say that one of the piles of scrap is kind of like a, a guard tower, like a kind of improvised guard tower. And we didn't kind of see that clearly the off, but now we do because there's a searchlight kind of shining down on our position. And we can see that now there are lots of bandits kind of moving onto our position. And at this point, the shots start to rain in and I dive for cover. All right. All right. All right. So you've taken out two of the bandits near me. Mm -hmm. And now there's a giant spotlight on you from a guard yeah. tower. And gunfire as well. So And gunfire. Right. Right. Okay. Um. Well, the spotlight is not on me, mm -hmm. so that's I've got that going for me. Um, and this this area that we're in is like really dark, so I don't think that I need to worry about that part. If I can just get if I can just get the rest of the scrap bandits who are looking for me to look elsewhere, mm -hmm. then I should be good for a minute. Yeah. So I yeah. think what I'm gonna do is like kind of rummage around at my feet, find another tuna can and just see if I can huck it over the nearest ridge and get them like one scrap pile over so mm -hmm. that they're looking in that area instead of this one. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Tried and true stick tuna can weapons mm -hmm. of choice. Um, so that, that seems like, <laughs> that seems like the best thing to do to me. Um, I mean, what do you think? react under fire sounds i mean you're the one who's yeah i mean i'm literally under fire but you are attempting to act whilst kind of the enemy has control of the situation you're being reactive now rather than than proactive so yeah so react under fire when you're in a bad spot which i am uh you take action in a fight to avoid danger or overcome an obstacle and i'm definitely trying to avoid danger so i feel like I feel like this fits pretty well. Um, let's see, which one do we think? Uh, there is moving into hiding or creating a distraction is rolling plus shadow. Mm -hmm. That sounds like pretty much exactly what I'm doing. So yeah, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll plus shadow. And that, that's a strong hit. That will be my... That will be my first one. Mm, um, nice. Yeah, so I get a little momentum, and I'm back in control. See, and you, you doubt the stick in the tuna can, but here I am so, in control. <laughs> so, like, I think I'm looking across at you, and I've seen you just fling the can, and I'm kind of internally screaming that you should be trying to help, but I actually see that it draws some of the bandits away, right? And I'm like, I, I, I can't kind of believe that's working and are you kind of are you starting to move in the opposite direction or are you i think she is just totally focused on the objective here like she is mm -hmm. just full tilt towards the mutara um she's not paying attention to anything else 
So I think, I think that's going to be gain ground is, Mm -hmm. is what I'm trying to do here. Um, So when you gain ground, uh, when you're in control and take action in a fight to reinforce your position or move towards an objective, which is what I'm trying to do, you gain ground. Um, So I think uh, in pursuit, fleeing or maneuvering, you roll plus edge. And I feel like I'm trying to maneuver. I feel like Mm -hmm. I'm trying to make my way over uh, kind of unstable piles of junk. So I'm going to call that a maneuver. I'm going to roll plus edge here. Uh, and that is that is a weak hit. So on a weak hit, I can choose one of these options. I can mark progress, I can take plus two momentum, or I can add a plus one on my next non-progress move. And I think... Not that I'm, okay, I have full confidence in us, and this is going swimmingly, so Mm -hmm. really everything's fine, but I think I'm probably going to take the plus one on my next move, just for padding, just in case. Yeah, Yeah. so I I see you kind of of disappearing off into the darkness, and I'm not mad, because, you know, I'm a professional, Um, but also we need to retrieve your ship, but also... I'm under fire quite significantly here and I'm outnumbered. I can kind of uh, hear more reinforcements coming and I can actually hear probably off in the distance, the sound of, of swoop bikes and skiffs being kind of fired up these kind of heavy engines kind of being um, kind of revved up. But so they can kind of enter the, the fray as well. And kind of the air is filled with laser fire kind of cutting across my position and, causing sparks to rain down from the the twisted metal that I'm using for cover because I'm in a bad spot. Um, But I've got to fight back. I have to kind of maybe try and at least take out like the searchlight to kind of maybe level the playing field a little bit. So I think what I'm going to do is because I'm kind of taking such heavy fire, I'm just kind of lean out and kind of almost blind fire in the general direction of the tower um, because um, I need to return fire in such a way that's going to buy you some more time and also kind of get me a bit more control back. So uh, when you're in a bad spot and you fight back, uh, you make the move clash. Um, That says uh, when you fight back against a foe at close quarters, roll plus iron, or when you exchange fire at a distance, roll plus edge. And that is what I'm going to do. I am like I said, blind firing out in the general direction of as many banders as I can see in the hope that it will kind of push them back. So let's roll plus edge. Okay, that is a weak hit. Uh, On a weak hit, you mark progress, uh, but you are dealt a counter blow or setback. You stay in a bad spot and must pay the price. So um, we do get to mark progress. um, So we're up to three out of ten there. Um, So what does that look like? I think I think kind of I squeeze off some rounds of like a burst of fire and I hear this smash and then the the scene is plunged into darkness as I manage to hit the searchlight and kind of send the person who's operating it kind of like scrabbling for cover. And I think maybe with a false confidence, I start kind of spraying gunfire around a little bit. I've got this assault rifle and kind of I'm kind of just going for it on full auto mode and it's not really hitting much and it's what it's made me realize is there are a lot more of them than I thought. And I am kind of surrounded and whilst I'm trying to kind of assault their position, I, all I'm doing is kind of entrenching them into cover. They are, they are kind of in very decent spots to, to kind of flank me and outmaneuver me. And I'm, you know, in trouble, we could say. Um, I also need to pay the price here, and I, I'm not. I've not been shot, and I don't want. So I don't want to take a hit to my health. I don't feel like Vesper is a um, the kind of person who would feel stress in combat. He's very used to fighting. So what I'm actually going to do is is introduce a narrative complication, which are the best types of complication, and I'm going to do that uh, by rolling on the combat action oracle. And that's an oracle you can use if, if you're not sure what an enemy is going to do in um, Starforged. You can kind of roll on this to give you some inspiration. But I also like to use it um, whenever I can see there being a complication, but I'm not quite sure what it is. So um, let's see what the oracle throws up. 92. 
92 says, use an unexpected weapon or ability. Hmm. Well, I'm assuming you don't get an unexpected weapon or ability. That would be awesome. <laughs> um, but That doesn't sound not. nearly as complicated. Yeah, that doesn't. So, yeah, it's the enemies that's got one. But what's what could that be? I think. Uh, so you heard, like, bikes revving up uh, earlier. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But we didn't see them. So I don't think you actually heard bikes revving up. I think that you think that you heard bikes revving up. And okay. what we actually hear is this like pile of junk kind of reconstituting itself into a standing position. And what you're hearing is the noise of that thing, like kind of powering on. And it's this like Frankenstein together robot, like cobbled out of scrap. Right. Well, so like, maybe the scrap bandits had kind of recovered like uh, a security or a kind of an enforcer bot that might have been used to kind of like suppress some kind of uprising somewhere and they've just kind of like beautified it patched, yes exactly. patched it back and <laughs> yeah so so what does that look like and if you're seeing it does that mean that it's near you and not near me i mean i've got enough troubles as it is <sighs> amazing how your troubles end up being my troubles isn't it um yeah that can be near me that's fine i think that i think it doesn't it's hardly recognizable as an enforcer bot anymore it's got like riveted and very poorly welded bits of scrap just kind of on it in like other makeshift armor and it's mm -hmm. sort of like spark spark you know the light in its eyes kind of like dims and brightens a little bit as it's it's like it's hanging in there um, but I think it's bigger than me, okay. which I don't like. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't like that either. Um, so I guess, yeah. So I guess if I'm pinned down by all this fire, then yeah, like I said, this is, this is your problem to deal with now. I'm very sorry, but yeah, here we are. Thanks. I appreciate all the gifts you give me. Um, so I just kind of like hold my stick, I guess. <laughs> Um, and so is, it is it like blocking the way where you're going, I guess? Yeah. I, I mean, it has to be, right? If it's just behind me, that's not that's not mm. really a problem. I'm just running away from it. So it's yeah. got a, it has to have like kind of emerged from the rubble in front of me right where I need to go. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm going to do the only rational thing that there is to do in this moment, which is... Uh, run up to it and try and bash it with my rusty pipe <laughs> <laughs> i appreciate i like the gusto um and you know 10 out of 10 for effort um you know i'm the i'm the professional soldier here um so if this works i'm gonna be slightly annoyed um but yeah yeah are you are you just like taking a wild swing at its head or what are you what are you doing um i, I mean... want to know what i'm seeing in detail <laughs> So I need, I need to really see this surreal scene unfold. Right. I think, so it's bigger than me. I don't think I'm going to be able to take a good swing at its head, but maybe, maybe in that case, I'm trying to go for like a leg possibly. That sounds more, that sounds more doable. Like maybe I crouch and I'm trying to like sweep its leg out with my rusty pipe, which hopefully lasts long enough to even, <laughs> okay. even make contact. Yeah. Um, so okay, yeah, you see this big thing kind of towering over me and, and Maeve just kind of like drops down to the ground and is like in the middle of, in the middle of a swing. So let's see, uh, let's see how the, the swing happens. Let's see, let's see how it goes. Um, I mean, this feels like a strike to me. Yeah. I mean, you're in control, aren't you? So Mm -hmm. I'm in control and assault a foe at close quarters uh, mm -hmm. roll. So that's plus iron. I feel like that's exactly what's happening. So that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to roll plus iron here. I have that plus one from oh, yeah, you the do. Last yeah. move. So armed with a stick and a plus one, <laughs> nothing can possibly go wrong. Yeah. Um, well, okay. So we hit. So not nothing can go wrong. 
but like not everything goes wrong. So yeah. I still think you should be impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so on a weak hit, I mark progress twice, but I expose myself to danger and I'm in a bad spot again. Hmm. So what, what does that look like? At least we get some progress out of this. Um, yeah, so we're up to five out of 10 now. So we're about halfway there, but it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> no, it really doesn't. Um, okay, so I think I think that um, my stick attack is mostly successful, that I managed to get it off balance. I mean, maybe that, maybe that wasn't even difficult considering we're on a pile of rubble. Maybe getting it off balance wasn't even hard. But maybe I get myself off balance too. Mm -hmm. And I have to like, I'm like now trying to stop myself from sliding down a scrap heap. I'm sure I have all my uh, shots. So that part's fine. <laughs> but <laughs> you don't want space tetanus. That would be better. No, you do not want space tetanus. That is, that's probably what would have happened if I had gotten a miss. I would have gotten space <laughs> tetanus. Um, but for now, I'm I'm trying not to let this thing hit me and just slide all the way down the the scrap heap and lose all the progress that I've made so far. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's what I'm. No big, yeah. I can do both of those at once. So I think as I'm like trying not to slide down this thing, this uh this pile here, that kind of means I'm scrabbling back up towards it and not mm -hmm. in a great position to like defend myself while I'm, while I'm scrambling. Um, so I think it's going to try and make a grab at me. Um, maybe it's got like claw hands. I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. sure. Uh, um, at least, at least two claw hands, I think at least if not more, I'm going to try to avoid as I've, as I've avoided sliding back all the way down the hill. Now I'm avoiding, uh, it grabbing me and pulling me, you know, pulling me into a, a nice, warm, friendly hug. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm going to try and dodge that, I think. Um, so that sounds to me like reacting under fire yep. because yep, I'm definitely. in a bad spot and mm -hmm. avoiding danger. So I'm I'm going to, I'm going to react under fire here. Um, I literally said dodging. So I feel like the fleeing dodging, Rolling plus edge sounds sounds exactly like what we're doing here. Yeah, perfect. Uh, so, so let's see. Another weak hit. Okay. Um, I I mean, what makes the most sense is that it hits me, right? Like mm -hmm. a, a hit to my health. I mean, it, it's 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 negative one to my health, right? So like, I'm not dying. Yeah. Um, so I think probably, let's see, I'm trying to get away from it and it's trying to grab me. I, I think probably like it, it does get like a part of my arm maybe. And in mm -hmm. trying to like wrench my arm out of its claw grasp, I kind of, um, I don't know, hurt, hurt my arm in, in some way. Mm -hmm. um, it's just trying to like get, get away from it. And I, and I can kind of see this and I've kind of gone from, the kind of thinking of this is bad um but at least Maeve is heading towards the ship uh I can maybe uh kind of hold the line here and you know keep these bandits at bay while you get to your ship but now I'm thinking we might be in a spot of bother and I'm seeing you kind of scrapping with this this pile of scrap and I am now being completely outflanked and outmaneuvered by bandits and I think that I think that whilst they've been laying this suppressing fire on me, meaning, meaning that I can't come out from behind cover, three, or let's say, yeah, three bandits have uh, moved right in on my position and they are armed with, um, like I said for you before, big, nasty looking, horrible, long kind of pikes that are covered in um, kind of barbed wire and they end in nasty kind of chainsaw blades. And they are... As I say, in the stick hierarchy, these are right at the top. These are premium death sticks, mm -hmm. um, kind of murder pokers. And the three bandits who are moving in on me all have them. And they, I'm just going to say, they, they are going to come right at me and 
they are kind of assaulting my position directly with their rusty weapons raised, kind of charging in on me. And I'm going to have to fight up close. Um, I'm used to that. And Vesper's trained for that. So I think he slings his assault rifle over his shoulder. He pulls out a pistol and a knife. And he is kind of ready for these scrap bandits to kind of catch some hands. So uh, they come down at him. And, you know, I can literally see the whites of their eyes because they are right on me. So I'm going to make the move clash again. So when I fight up close... And I don't have control. It's going to be rolling plus iron. So let's do that now. Finally, a strong hit. So what does that look like? Yes. Well, hey. Um, so I think, like I said, these these bandits can fight. They can handle themselves, but they aren't really a match for Vesper's military training. And I think he's going to kind of do some cool stuff here. I think as one comes in, bringing its weapon kind of crashing down, he kind of does a cool kind of combat roll out of the way and kind of snaps off a shot with his pistol into the belly of this bandit who kind of just crumples to the floor. And then kind of quick as a flash, uh, the next bandit's coming at him, but he has kind of like spun round, shifted his weight, grabbed its stick, held it from behind, used this second bandit as cover and snapped off a shot at the third bandit who just kind of drops on the spot, lifelessly dead. And this bandit that I'm using as human shield is perhaps starting to rethink his life choices. And, you know, he has a brief second to contemplate that before uh, my knife goes in his back and he kind of crumples to the ground. And I think Vesper is someone who is trying to escape his past and things like this, where he is kind of forced into a position where he has to use kind of deadly violence and kind of realizes he is a weapon of war. He is, uh, you know, a deadly killing machine. Um, and uh, yeah, that's going to get him through this situation, even though it doesn't feel great um, to be, uh, you know, so full of rage. But um, he's going to have to use that. Now, um, I did roll a strong hit, which puts me in control. And it also I think it's one. interesting that part of your strong hit is that you deal existential dread damage to both yourself and <laughs> and your enemies. That's well, that's a choice. I mean, I don't know if you've heard the show before, but like, I like to give things weight. <laughs> They're not just hit points ticking down. Okay, so that puts me back in control, and on a strong hit, we can mark progress twice, which takes us up to seven. And I think Vesper to him. It feels like the tide has turned in this fight. And he is going to use the fact that he's in a in, a, in control and, and use that kind of momentum that he's got to try and lay down some suppressing fire of his own. Because I think as the bandits moved in on my position, the gunfire coming in probably stopped because they didn't want to hit their own people. But um, now I'm going to kind of come out of cover. And I think my assault rifle is back. And I have the uh, kind of underbarrel grenade launcher, like an aliens, kind of on there. And I kind of walk out in a big kind of action hero movement, which I hope won't come back to bite me. And I'm just going to shoot some high explosives uh, into their kind of positions to try and kind of push them back, force them out of cover and kind of see if I can make them flee. So I have control. So I will be making the move strike. And I'm fighting at a distance again. So that is rolling plus edge. Another strong hit. Now, on a strong hit, we dominate our foe, stay in control, and mark progress twice. So that puts us up to nine. So I think, and this looks cool, explosions are popping off everywhere as I'm kind of walking out and just kind of firing off these shots. And kind of bandits are kind of like flying through the air. The tower where the, the, the kind of searchlight was before starts to kind of crumple into a heap. And maybe it kind of crushes some of the bandits who are trying to flee. This is a show of force. And I have kind of gone out there and blasted these bandits um, back to where they came from. And, and I can kind of see them scurrying off. And um, I'm kind of quite pleased with what I would say is my destructive, kind of fairly explosive display. Um, so, yeah, that's so that's that. That's how I've dealt with that situation. I'm sure I probably saw quick glimpses of how cool and heroic you're being as I'm being chased by a murder robot. Um, 
if you'd like to come help with that. <laughs> yeah. I think, um, so you you mentioned um, like high tier murder sticks with like uh, you know chainsaw bits at the end. So I think probably this this bot we mentioned it might have multiple arms. I think it pulls out like one of the arms is like one of those sticks, and mm -hmm. um, I'm like, mm, you know, I don't want that to touch me. I don't I yeah. don't really chainsawed today. Rusty chainsawing coming. Okay, so I'm gonna um, try and come to your aid. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm I have faith in you that you can maybe avoid this thing if it gets really bad. But you're not going to be able to take it down. And I feel like it's the momentum of this battle has shifted a bit, and I feel like it's really only this thing we need to take down. And we're kind of in the clear. Um, so I think I'm going to run over to you. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the move uh, gain ground. Um, and it says, when you charge boldly into action to come to aid of others, uh, you can roll plus heart. And I feel like that's kind of appropriate for what I'm doing now. Um, so, yeah, I'm kind of just going to hot tail it over there, leaving the kind of explosions and the kind of flames and everything behind me. So I'm going to make the move gain ground rolling plus heart. And that is a weak hit. So on a weak hit, I can choose one of the options. I can mark progress. I can take plus two momentum, or I can add plus one on the next move. I, I think narratively, the momentum has shifted between us and them. So I feel like I'm going to reflect that by taking plus two momentum. I'm heading over to you. I'm kind of charging boldly to your aid. And I now am in a decent position to kind of get a shot at this kind of big enforcer bot Frankenstein's monster robot thing. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to use my second weapon master ability, which says when you strike using a personal weapon, which has a limited ammo or a one single use mode, add plus one, mark progress on a hit, and then sacrifice resources. So um, I think that I have somewhere on like my bandolier or something, just the thing for this situation. I have like a little kind of like EMP rocket that fits in the under barrel grenade launcher of, of my rifle. And I think that as I'm running, there are flames behind me. There's kind of carnage. There's scrap bandits running around. There's collapsing piles of metal and kind of sparks going off everywhere. More explosions. I didn't even shoot that many grenades, but things are exploding. It's awesome. And... I just kind of reach in slow-mo into my bandolier, pull out this thing, jam it in, aim up, and shoot. And I'm going to strike, and I'm going to be making the move rolling plus edge. I've, I've kind of feel like I shouldn't have bigged up how cool this looked because I've rolled a miss. <laughs> um, I, yeah, you know, you're kind of pushing it considering the last thing you did was also cool. Yeah, yeah, that maybe that's my limit. I need to do just two cool things uh per combat. Uh yeah, uh, the asset says it's a one-time use, so I'm going to I'm going to take a minus 1 to my supply. But what I will say in my defense of being so cocky and overconfident is that because we'd built up so much momentum, I can now safely burn that momentum, um reset it back down to 2 and we can turn that miss into a strong hit. But I I still think that we should also reset the cool points here because <laughs> otherwise I'll never learn. You you'll never learn. So how about it works, but uh, maybe a little differently than you thought, so we can keep the spirit of that miss. Yeah. So, so I we missed. Kind of... <laughs> but, we get, but we get the end result. So so what did what did you have in mind for how did, how are you going to turn my miss into a strong hit? Well, I get to be cool. That's how the, that's how this is going to happen. So okay. hear me out. Hear me out. Um, you you huck this thing, and you literally miss. Like it does not hit the Frank Enforcer bot. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my trusty stick, and I'm just going to kind of like spear it on on the end of my stick, and like kind of flip it. Uh, and lob it straight into this thing's face right. is what I'm going to do. So it okay. still hits, just you needed a little help. That's all. Yeah, I just needed you to just kind of take it that last piece of the way. Um, so, yeah. Um, That's all teamwork. <laughs> well, yeah, it makes the dream work, literally. Um, so the bot is out of action. 
um, I guess, um, and we'll kind of get to that in a second. But that strong hit means that we can mark progress twice, which means that we have completely filled this progress track and the additional one bonus progress I get from my Weapon Master asset doesn't matter at all. So yeah, all boxes filled. So how does this robot go down? So I think, um, I mean, it's probably not light, right? I'm, I've never... I've never actually lobbed an EMP rocket before, but I imagine they probably have a little bit of heft to them. So mm -hmm. I think that lobbing it into this thing's face kind of like knocks it off balance. And we see it like kind of start to fall backwards down the other side of the hill towards where we're going as it like uh, shorts and like starts to uh, kind of seize up. And like maybe we see little sparks as the EMP like totally cuts it out and just pew, and it's like falling backwards down the hill yeah we, we, we should have thought about us. that <laughs> well yeah i'm i'm cl i'm still classing that as my hit so you know that's how i'll tell it in the bar afterwards you know mm -hmm, um mm -hmm. so what do we do like now narratively i i don't think it makes sense to kind of keep fighting like scrap bandits has as a kind of like a, a group don't fight when the odds are against them. And I feel like we've kind of taken out their enforcer bot. I mean, I took it out. Um, but, and also we've kind of shown that we have explosive firepower. So how, what do you think we should do? Just kind of move in on, on the Mutara? go for it. Yeah. Like okay. just straight for the Mutara. First off, that's what Maeve's going to be doing anyway. But okay. I think, like you said, narratively, we've kind of like, wrapped up the loose ends that are like nearest to us so yeah i think i think she's just i think we should just go for it i mean you can see the fuselage it's like right there okay so so we just kind of cut through that last bit of the camp to get to where we're going we're kind of making a beeline straight for that bit of fuselage we can see sticking out of the back um i'm maybe hanging back a little bit being a bit more cautious um and kind of seeing if there is any more kind of extra threats because you know i know to expect surprises but you're kind of running off ahead um and yeah what happens when we when we kind of get to where we're going um well what happens is i get everything i want and we fly off into the <laughs> sunset and everything goes great um or that's what's going to happen in a minute i'm absolutely positive so i'm I'm running towards the ship. I'm very, like, very single-minded here. So I'm, I'm going to take decisive action, mm -hmm. um, which is when you seize an objective in a fight, envision how you take decisive action, and then you roll the challenge dice and compare your progress. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to roll the challenge dice then. That is a... Well, that's a strong hit on the roll, but you're still actually in a bad spot as you're kind of running off ahead. And for take decisive action, it says if you're in a bad spot, treat a strong hit as a weak hit and a weak hit as a miss. Uh, okay. Weak hit. Um, you achieve your objective, but not without cost. Roll on the table below or choose one. All right, let's let's roll for this then. Let's. What could possibly go wrong? 89, it gets complicated. Uh, now, for the first time, is, <laughs> yeah. is when it starts getting complicated. Uh, the true nature of a foe or objective is revealed. Okay, the true nature of a foe or objective is revealed. Well, considering the whole focus has been on the Mutara this whole time, I feel like the natural thing is just there's some twist mm -hmm. about finally getting to this ship. So maybe, so we've only been able to see like the fuselage, right? Like we've only been able to see like one specific part of the ship and the mm -hmm. rest is kind of like in a big scrap pile. So I think that when we arrive, we find out that it's not, oh, the rest is in a big scrap pile. It's the rest is a big scrap pile um, that that my beautiful perfect ship has been amalgamated into some 
monstrosity of of a thing uh, that I thought we could only see part of it, but really only part of it is connected. And we're looking at the one single part of the ship that we can see sort of like start to, you know what? I think it starts to move. Um, right. I okay. think something, yeah, I think, well, I mean, you gotta be dramatic about it. Right. Um, so I think it starts to move. I think something is like shifting through this pile and we start seeing some of the, the rubble and the scrap and everything like, kind of start getting higher and higher as something's like standing. So the Mutara or what's left of it has been kind of like what repurposed into something else. Yeah. I, well, I think it makes sense, right? Cause they already have a Frank enforcer bot. So maybe this is just kind of how they, this is just how they like to spend their time is uh, Frank and cobbling cobbling different pieces together i don't think this is another robot i think it's maybe some sort of like i don't know like a mech or something like there's dudes in it maybe pilot yeah it. Maybe, maybe we can see like some scrap bandits kind of moving into the top of it when they were fleeing from my grenade assault oh yeah they were, yeah they were fleeing to here and this thing that is kind of getting to its feet because i think it's cool that it stands up in, but it's not a robot. It's not, not another kind of enforcer bot. Maybe it's like a big war walker and it's got the fuselage of the Mutara and it's got kind of like four different legs from four different things. And it's got big cannons on it. It's got, it's got like armaments up the wazoo. It's got like rocket launchers on the top. They've clearly been putting this together for some purpose. You know, this planet is a, uh, littered with the 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 remains of a long lost war, and maybe they've just kind of cobbled all this together into one mega walking tank. And this feels like a big narrative complication and like real trouble. Mm -hmm. And I love the idea that you, when you were having your cool moment, thought that you would like scared them away, <laughs> but really they were <laughs> headed towards this. Yeah. So like. And I, th I think that kind of Vesper's seeing this and like he's kind of he's kind of seeing the the full extent of its armaments and he turns to Maeve and says I think you're going to need a considerably bigger stick. So that was Combat in Ironsworn Starforged. A huge, huge thank you to Jenna for helping me show you how kind of fluid and open and creative it can be. Um, if you want to check her stuff out, and I thoroughly recommend you do, you will find links to everything you need in the description below. You'll also find details there of our new Patreon, where if you sign up, you can get early access to all episodes, you can get exclusive behind-the-scenes content, and you can get your name on screen, like these fine folks. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe if you've not done so already, and click the little bell icon to be notified when the next video drops. Until next time, it's farewell and safe passage.